level of competitors and We continue with uh, Unit 4, Business Planning, and in this session we're going to cover the elements of P4, P5, and possibly P6. Let me have a look. P6. P6 uh, will include a little bit about uh, investing in other portfolios. This is where things changed. But I think much of the stuff that we're going to cover will be P4 and P5. The other P's have been covered in the other uh, sessions. So I'd like you to pay close attention as we go through these uh, materials. As a matter of recap, because it is recorded sessions, I'd like you to play back the other videos pretty quick when you're in your own independent sessions and then you can continue with this one. Now, I presume that uh, you are proceeding very well and let's move together in this session. And the things that I would like us to look at closely are as follows. Bear with me on that. Um, now that we have just done the bit of background uh, sort of um, um, recap on this session, uh, bear with me, I just want to look at the resource because I can see materials over here. And I also apologize for the bit of noise that you can hear from the computer because uh, the machines are very sensitive. We can't control that. We can't hear machines here right now. But it tend to pick up very minute sounds. Uh, so we are going to continue looking at uh, what you need to do and sort of describe the contents of your business plan and why. You put those things in your business plan and why. You've got to describe them as well. Okay, let me very quickly uh, look at the board here. We, under uh, the market analysis. Market analysis, in the previous session I talked about the target market, who you target, and why you're targeting those people. And I also talked about products and services. Now, here I just want to emphasize one point. When it comes to target market, why have you put that in your business plan? That's the biggest question you've got to ask yourself. Why have you put a target market? Every business that you set up has a target group. Those people who need your services. I presume that by now you will have established the need for the business. You would have done maybe a market search by yourself or doing a form of a survey. Now let's assume that you have established that actually the product I'm selling or the service I'm offering, these are the people who need it. So you must define the target market. It could be, you say, business men. This probably your business is about offering um, counseling to businessmen who are very busy. In fact, businessmen and women. You've got to be correct in this time, okay? Businessmen and women. Why are you targeting them? Because they don't have time to relax and talk to somebody about their issues. So you set up a service called Come and Laugh with Me. There you go. You can set up a, a, a business that targets maybe um, diplomats, why diplomats, because ABCD. Once you set up those services or products and you identify the target market, really it becomes easier for you to tell us the reasons why you are going to identify who is your competitor. That's what I'm leading to. But before I move on to there, let me have another. For example, West Middles Open College has got a very special product where actually we are targeting African entrepreneurs Okay? African entrepreneurs, okay? 
where in diaspora diaspora African entrepreneurs in diaspora why because we want to provide a certain service which they can't receive because they are in diaspora so we create that kind of thing or oh, this product is going to be helpful to the Africans that's what we have assessed and we have identified the need so in the business plan target market I define it or you define yours so in this short space of time I'd like you to define your own target market and put a rationale why this target market is important to you that's very critical once you do that I've already talked about this in the previous session. Now let's look at the competitors. Who is a competitor? This now covers the elements of P4 and P5 in your uh, Unit 4 business planning. Who is a competitor? Let's imagine I'm playing football. The ball is right here. I'm about to kick it. My opponent comes and takes off from me. He's my competitor. I'm competing with him because we are chasing one ball. In football, those who like football, there's a round thing. Yeah, those days it had a definite shape and you find a, a definite design. Nowadays they come in different designs. Different designs, so you, 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 you can't tell whether it's a, a, a basketball ball or whatever it is. Those days we used to know this is a football. But imagine this is a one. This man is trying to kick. He's got football boots. He's man A. This man B is trying to kick it the opposite direction. There is a competition. These two are competing for one thing, the ball. Where to take it in the other person's goal. Where there's a goalkeeper there. Business is like that. The moment you step out, in Unit 1, we talked about stepping out. The moment you step out and launch a business, somebody hears about it. Or somebody somewhere does a similar business like the one you've launched. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Very true in business. Now, this is where, after you have defined your target market, you go to look at who are your competitors, who is in the similar business, in the similar industry. Okay, let us spend time on analyzing this issue and it will help you to answer P4 and P5 and also it will lead you to P6, investing in other portfolios because this is where things um, begin to change as your business grows. A business is like a human being, as your business grows. For example, a baby is born today. You buy diapers, they change in size because the bum of a baby is also changing in size. Eventually, you stop diapers because the baby is growing up. If you keep the baby in diapers for 10 years, there's a problem there. Okay? Sometimes, because of other issues, uh, the diapers due to illness, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about natural development of a business. So after a while, the baby stops wearing diapers, they've got some uh, um, proper underwears, then they've got trousers on top or skirt on top, as the case might be. Then you see that the business is moving on, and eventually where you used to supervise them is no longer you. They are in the hands of teachers at school from 8 in the morning to 3 p.m. So the role also changes and whose hands they're going to be in changes. It's no longer you holding the business, but many other people begin to hold the business. It shows the development of your business. But now, before that happens, before you launch out, you must understand who are your competitor. A competitor is simply somebody chasing after the same target market in the same industry of your business. That's a competitor. And there, uh, you're going to determine the market share. Your competitors, how much percentage of the market have, ta have they taken? Maybe they've taken 30%. Maybe you need 60%. Maybe the other 10% uh, is somebody else's. Okay, not drawn according to scale. So when you come into the business, you say, well, of these how much can I slice off? Maybe I can go and get 40 from this guy. I take away his market. He remains with 20. How am I going to do that? Your business plan, your business must be compelling. The way you deliver your product must be compelling that they move away from where they were to come to you. This is why it's important to make sure that your business plan is tight. 
when you start launching, it will guide you to your goal. Now, there are some ways in which we list competitors. All right? There is what we call primary competitors. If you've never heard of this, and secondary, then tertiary. Okay? Tertiary competitors. This is a new thing for you. Primary competitors are those who are directly involved in your business. If you're a college, they are also a college. If they target a posting, uh, post compulsory, you also target post compulsory. Exactly equal like yourself. Your second competitors, these are people who don't directly deliver the program in a similar way, but they are linked as referrals to other institutions who operate like you. When they hear that you are in the field, they are going to go and report. And those other competitors whom they represent are going to reorganize to make sure they defend their territory. The tertiary competitors are those that, for example, family, family A, you've never heard this before, family A always sends their kids to college C. Ten generations. Uncle, mother, everyone has gone there. And for them, it's class. But then you come on the scene with your college offering the same qualification, the same standard as where they used to go. These will inform that, ah, you, look, there's a new college that has come up. Why not improve your services? Blah, 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 blah. They will very quickly begin to instigate the provider of their services to look at you. You understand that? So you, you're having different goals. Now, in, I want you to classify your competitors and move forward. And one of the areas, that one of the things that we do in the classification of competitors is as follows, using the pyramid. I'll use an example for in one of the business plans that we've been using uh, since we started this program. Uh, I'll go to the page of competitors here. I like this. It's on page 26. Uh, page 26. Sorry, sorry. I mean, it's page competitors. It's page 25. And I know my glasses. Sometimes I read something wrong. It's on page 25. To make it easier for you, page 25. I'll just read this, this, this snapshot to you. Page 25, I read. Competitors. Amakaya Wing sets itself apart from a number of existing business and enterprises support organizations, both in diaspora and in Zambia. So we say, we set ourselves apart. Or Amakaya Wing does set itself apart. How? Okay. It is a unique setup in that the organization acts as a conduit on both a site, that is in Zambia, and abroad which is a unique selling point. Now, once you make a statement like that, you set yourself apart, this is your own business plan. And sometimes make it loud so people can know, because in your marketing materials, you'll be saying, we are these, we are these, I am these, other people are not. In business, it's like politics. You're going to drum your own uh, voice, otherwise no one's going to hear about you. Claim I can do this. I can make you fly to the moon. One second. But make sure you fulfill that. <laughs> Don't just promise what you can do. Right. Now, let's go back to the topic. Once you do that, you must make a list of your perceived competitors. Some of these competitors, actually, it's a perception from your own point of view. They can become your biggest uh, lead to the market. Although they're in the same industry, that's another topic altogether. But let's just go to this. Now, here we create what we call a pyramid. The way you can enlist your competitors. Why? Because we want to make sure that every competitor is reflected and how we are going to deal with them. How we're going to deal with them is simply comparing their services and the level of operation and how they look after their customers. You can draw a pyramid. Yeah, now, in your business plan, you're described, you're listing your competitors, okay? The pyramid here, really, you can think it two ways. The biggest competitor, you can put them A here. Who is your biggest competitor, the primary competitor? 
who are your secondary competitors, who are your tertiary competitors, and others. You can classify them. So you, 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 you name the, your competitors, you name your competitors, how many they are is not a big issue. What's important is to identify them, especially those in your area, and they're actually trip they made so much money and you hear about it you also jump on the plane to go to Dubai and buy the same gadget and you bring to the same market who bought from the, the, the person B and they say oh we got that already then your staff doesn't sell then you say ah no nah, no no I know what they did ah, nah, 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 nah. no you did not do your homework if somebody is already providing a service and nobody has said they want to buy from you don't do it go and look for new opportunities in stepping out we talked about recognizing uh, an opportunity. Go in other areas where there's need, no one provides. That way you find that your products or services will have a good market. Even though they are competitors, you're gonna be sharing the market because 40% are not supplied. So you can take the market share of 40%. Are you happy with me? Thank you very much. We're gonna close just here a little bit. In fact, I'll say pause the video. Now yeah, I won't close, pause the video and then play back again for these materials. Then I would like us to talk about short, very quickly um, the rest of the, uh, uh, the the business plan where we talked about a SWOT. I want you to refer to the previous material. SWOT analysis is very critical. And then I want to bring you to a place where you do a financial projection. Analysis unit, I think it's unit three. Go and look at that. But here, let me cover investing in other portfolios. I want to look at investing in other portfolios. So after you've done your market analysis and your business uh, in the future, you think it's gonna grow. And I want you now to think about what are you going to do with the extra profit, the money that you make as a profit, okay? Say for example, your business is growing and your promise profit margin is 20% of your investment every year or 30 or whatever the case may be. Let me translate that into the, uh, maybe, um, let me say pounds or quachas or whatever the case may be. Let me say if you made 20,000 pounds per annum is coming out as your profit. After you paid all your expenses, you paid yourself very well, every expense is paid for in the business, including your workers. You always remain with that. You have a choice. Number one, you can choose to eat. To eating means you got a mouth here, that's a mouth, and there's teeth, there's teeth there, and there's eyes there, and there's a nose there. Yeah, okay, eating simply means whatever your nose smells, if it smells good, whatever your eyes see, if they see nice, it was looking good, and whatever your mouth feel like a biting, just go and buy. Buy and eat. That's what you can do with your profit. Or take your family to a big, big holiday. 
right? Let's talk about this as a community. Take your family to a very big holiday. These are choices as a business person. Some people say, ah, or reward, okay? If you make a huge profit, reward, reward self. None of these things are wrong. Trust me, they are good because they just make you feel happy or accomplished. Now, how much of this eating you do in that? How much of this, um, let me say, how much of percentage of this big holiday you do in that? How much of this you reward yourself? Rewarding yourself could be new car or wife, um, uh, uh, wife jewelry, women like jewelry, uh, children, better schools. This is eating. Because once you invest in these things, they will not bring the money back. Never. So there's nothing wrong in them. All you have to be wise is find out maybe 2%, maybe 3%, maybe 4%. After you work it out, there will be a balance. Now, portfolios. After you reward yourself, eat. Eat is important. And part of this, eat. This type of eating will bring money back. This part of eating will that bring money back. But where do you invest? It's important to be to, to look at uh, uh, stocks, bonds, etc. Or launching a new business in which you're not directly in, in, involved you become a, an equity financier, private equity financier. Meaning, say for example, you made with 10,000 pounds and you want to invest elsewhere, you can become a private equity, private what? Equity financier. Meaning, when, if somebody wants a, 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 to run their own business and they want to expand it, but they are short of 10,000 pounds, they say, look, whoever gives us 10,000 pounds, We'll share in our business, we'll give them 40% equity. We, our owner of the business, will remain with that one. Meaning, as long as business B is running, you will always get 40% of their profit. You're not involved in the business, so you're going into agreements. You can do that. That's other portfolios other than your own business. Stocks, go to stock markets, buy good stocks. Recently in England, they, they floated the, 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 the post office, the public bought shares. You could have put money in there. Go to African stock markets, Lusaka, Luce, very good stock market there. Look at the, uh, the, the brokers, what they, they can do for you. Very good. In the third world countries, things grow good, man. Look at that. So many, many other ways. Think about that. And what I want like you to do here is a simple task for you. Research on investing in other portfolios. There are regulated sort of people who can talk to you about how you can do it. Your bank investment department can help you to do this. Go to your bank manager, talk to them about investing in other portfolios. They will take you through and they will advise you properly because they are regulated. On this note, I'd like us uh, to conclude uh, this topic. We have looked at P4, P3, P4 and P5. Investing in other portfolios is a concluding part for this uh, unit for business planning. I'd like you to Spend time developing your portfolio, meaning your folder. I'll just pick up one folder. I think I brought one folder um, here. Yes, we got. Your folder must be something like this. Not exactly the, 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 the huge amount of information, but you must have a folder that you collect, you put stuff in, every evidence that you produce, Every document, every recording that you do, put a CD in the folder. That is what you're going to submit for your assessment, for those who are on awards, certificates, and diplomas. But for those who are just on continuous professional development, there is no need for you to submit a folder for assessment. But you can collect the evidence. In future, you want to upgrade your learning to uh, a, 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 a certificate or a diploma, or as the case might be. So just keep that evidence with you. Thank you very much. For any questions, please do email us on the Moodle. For those who are doing online distance learning, on the Moodle, there's an online tutor there. Make an appointment. 
and begin to talk. Thank you very much. Bye for now.